What is going on guys? Welcome back. Gonna close the door real quick. I uh, hope you guys had a safe and fun 4th of July uh, weekend with your families. Uh, hope you guys stayed safe uh, and enjoyed your time looking at fireworks and enjoying uh, your time doing all that. Uh, in this video, what I was going to uh, get into, um, because a lot of people are focusing on, on NBA free agency, um, I just wanted to dive in to my opinions on uh, the award runs next season, uh, who I think could win the MVP, Most Improved Player, Coach of the Year, um, uh, First Teams, uh, all that madness, Rookie of the Year, and all that. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say, uh, I think we'll wait for MVP, that'll probably be last. Uh, most Improved Player for next year. In my opinion, uh, I kind of have a bias towards Kentucky being from Kentucky and uh, just having a um, bias towards them because that's the only college team that I really pay attention to throughout the season. But I think the most improved player next year will be Malik Monk. Uh, hear me out. He did not have any sort of a season his first two seasons, um, but I think with his three-point shooting, uh, the fact that Charlotte is going to be wide open, he's going to be able, they're going to be able to play all their young players and get them the playing time that they need to succeed. And I think that he is similar to Victor Oladipo where he has the muscle stature. He's big enough, um, athletic enough to be a similar type combo guard. Um, I think uh, if it's not him, uh, it could end up being someone um, who's, who's another player that could step up. Uh, Kimball Walker, he could have an amazing season. And if he just got a shit ton of assists and led the... Uh, Boston Celtics to the number one seed uh, in the East, then he could be another uh, one to watch out for too. Although he is kind of, he might be too good. Uh, I know typically they try to give those out to like guys like Lou Williams uh, and six men like that. Um, so just speaking of that, we're gonna dive into six man of the year, and I think that that's actually gonna be in, ending up being uh, Danny Green um, because. I think that he's, there's no way he's going to start. Um, but coming off the bench, uh, if he can just average uh, 15 to 20 points, who knows, uh, play lockdown defense and be their uh, defensive anchor that they need, that should be enough to get him uh, six man of the year. I'm not big on six man of the year. I don't typically pay attention to it, so that could be completely wrong. Uh, who knows? Maybe they inject him into the starting lineup. Uh, I guess only time will tell. Um so diving into the next, uh, diving into the next um, award, uh, coach of the year. I think that the coach of the year next year is going to be Brad Stevens of the Boston Celtics, uh, because I do think that the um, the Boston Celtics are going to have a standout year. I don't think that there's going to be anything holding them back from being a number one seed in the East. Um, the Boston, the Brooklyn is not going to have um, nearly. Uh, enough due to the fact that I think Durant is going to be injured throughout the majority of the season. He might be able to play in some of the playoffs, but I could I don't really see that happening. Uh, another player could be Andre Iguodala if he get, ends up getting on uh, one of these uh, championship contenders uh, and they end up making a run. Uh, I could see him being a fit on the Miami Heat if the Miami Heat end up trading for Russell Westbrook. Uh, and now getting into that, um, I guess we'll dive right into the MVP conversations. I think what Russell Westbrook, if he ended up on the Miami Heat, he could be in contention for the MVP. Other players like uh, Kim Walker, if he had a standout season, could be in contention for it. Um, it just depends on what happens. But I think the two main ones that are going to stand out and they're kind of viewed as the up next kind of guys in the NBA are for sure uh, Kyrie Irving and Anthony Davis. I think they're viewed as the guys who are going to be able to win it next year. Um, but Kyrie Irving being on a team where he's not going to have as much help as Anthony Davis, I think that the individual stats could stand out a little bit more, and they have leaned towards individual stats more than overall team play. So I think that might give him the slight edge over Anthony Davis. But I think that that is all going to be silenced due to the bright lights of L.A., I do think that Anthony Davis, at the end of the year, will be walking away with that MVP trophy in his hands, and I don't think that there's anything holding him back from that now that he has all the star players and potential around him. 
I don't think that there is anything that should be stopping him from that. Now, getting into ne- next year's championship, it's it's hard, but uh, because there's still a lot of trades that could happen, uh, a lot of teams still need to get some role players. Uh, they still need to figure out where Andre Iguodala is going to go. I think that he's always going to be a player playing uh, in championship or Western Conference Finals uh, games. Uh, I don't think he's signed a contract yet. I might be wrong. He might have signed one this morning. Um, I guess we'll see. Uh, another player is Russell Westbrook. If he ends up going to the Miami Heat, I could easily see them being in the Eastern Conference Finals and in the uh, NBA Championship with Jimmy Butler and Russell Westbrook. That would certainly be a duo for the ages because you know Russell Westbrook is not is kind of a defensive slouch at times, and Jimmy Butler is definitely no slouch, being one of the best defenders in the league. And I think that that would be an awesome duo to see. Um, but next year, I do think that the... Yeah, let's turn on the light. Make it a little brighter. Okay, that turned off the TV. I didn't turn on the light. There we go. A little bit brighter. Um, I think that the team that will be coming out of the West, uh, for Western Conference Finals, oh, God. I do think that the Lakers will end up being in the championship. I don't think that there's going to be anything stopping from them, being that they're going to have the two best front court players in the league, uh, excluding guy. I I guess you could put Joel Embiid up there too, but the Marcus Cousins and Anthony Davis, that is probably going to be the best front court pairing that you can have, along with LeBron James' passing ability. I don't think there's going to be anything stopping them from reaching the uh, the NBA Finals. Uh, another team to look out for, I could see the Portland Trailblazers making a move. Um, it's Carmelo Anthony, uh, you know, got his jersey on. Uh, he's not as good as he used to be, but I could see him going to a team like the Lakers or the Trailblazers, and that could um, change who is going there. I think that the NBA Western Conference Finals is going to end up being the Trailblazers versus the Lakers. I think the Lakers are going to end up advancing and playing the Boston Celtics. That could be wrong. Still a lot to go to happen, but I think the Philadelphia 76ers are going to fall out of contention. I don't think Brooklyn is going to have nearly enough um, as they're not going to have uh, unless they have uh, Kevin Durant. If they have Kevin Durant for the uh, NBA playoffs, I could definitely see them playing in the conference finals and in the finals. But as it stands right now, uh, KD is not expected to play in the season at all. So I do think that the Boston Celtics will advance. And I do think that the championship coming out next year will be handed down to the Lakers. uh, And rightfully so. I think LeBron James will get his fourth ring. Uh, I guess only time will tell. A lot of this has to do with what Russell Westbrook will do, Melo will do, Andre Iguodala. There's still a lot of players out there who are going to be on the move. Other players are going to get traded. Um, I still think something's going to happen. Uh, Chris Paul is going to end up somewhere. Uh, different because I don't think that the dynamic is working with him and James Harden both being really willing passers and scorers at the same time. I don't think that their whole dynamic is working very well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think I got to all the awards. Uh, NBA Finals next year, Lakers, Celtics, Lakers take it home. I guess we'll see what happens. Um, anyway, if you guys enjoy, leave a like, leave a dislike, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with what I'm doing. Um, I recently, Jake Paul, he did a little giveaway, so I'm hoping that I can win an Alienware laptop so I can have that set up going on in the future videos, uh, because I do have an Alienware, uh, keyboard and mouse, uh, so who knows, maybe it's fate, maybe I'll end up winning that, uh, only time will tell. Uh, so, uh, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, as I said, leave a dislike, subscribe, and, uh, always check back for more, uh, videos, and, uh, have a fantastic day, as I always say here. Bye-bye. Sorry about that, guys. I forgot to mention probably what is going to be the closest, uh, Rookie of the Year race that we have seen in a while. Um, when, this is my awards predictions. And um, so let's think about the rookies. So you have Zion Williamson out in the Western Conference along with uh, R.J. Barrett and John Morant out east. Uh, John Morant's out west. Um, 
those are going to be, in my opinion, the top three guys who are going to be competing for the Rookie of the Year. Um, I could also see guys... Um, I could see other guys uh, competing for it, but I don't think that they're going to be any match for those top three picks. Um, uh, John Morant out west is going to have a clean slate. He's not going to have anyone to pass to. Uh, he's going to be able to take as many shots as he needs, uh, play his type of ball, and they're going to be able to give him all the minutes that he needs. So I'm not worried about that. Zion Williamson, they're not going to hold him back on any minutes restrictions because of the talent and the pure athletic potential that he possesses. So I do not see them holding him back either. Or um, RJ Barrett, um, they could. I could see him having uh, restricted minutes behind Kevin Knox, um, but I do not think that that's going to happen. Uh, I think they're all going to get their playing time. I think that the race would come down to John Morant and R.J. Barrett, but due to, uh, I think R.J. Barrett's team is going to suck. I don't think that he's going to be in contention, but I do think it's going to come down to John Morant or Zion Williamson, um, and I don't think that there's going to be anything stopping from Zion Williamson from taking this Rookie of the Year race right out of any other player's hands. Um, legit just ripping it out of their hands because you really can't stop Zion. And he is an athletic beast. I don't think that there's going to be anything stopping him from grabbing that Rookie of the Year award. So uh, I guess only time will tell. Um, so that's my prediction for the Rookie of the Year. Uh, I hope I didn't miss any other um, predictions. So if you liked, uh, like. If you dislike, leave a dislike. Subscribe and hit that post notification bell to stay up for date. And to stay up to date. And uh, check back for more content. Uh, try and do some different things out. Gonna upload a video. I was gonna upload it on Tuesday, but it kind of got fucked up. So I might go ahead and upload that today on Monday, so I can try out the uh, the thumbnails that I'm going to be putting on to the videos for now on. Uh, other than that, you guys uh, stay safe, stay out of trouble, and stay positive. Have a wonderful day, as I always say here, and have a great day.